All right, so this is going to speed up. We are going to tweak the colors a little bit. And I think this is reasonable. Also, it's group C. So just to get things correct here, we've got Matt. This is a play all three between two players in the top of group C right now. And we've got Hera coming in here, five and one after two rounds. We have Capwatch coming in here, five and one after two rounds. Either player is going to be very happy with like a 2-1 split here just today. Uh, Hera obviously comes in here as the favorite. Hera was the player who won his group uh, with 13 wins and two losses in the first season. Uh, didn't actually end up making the season finals, of course, because he ran into Vinchester later on in the semis. But that's the type of conversation you have around Hera. He is the most active of all the pros right now. I feel like he, he you know, is feeling the game, is feeling really good, is feeling really sharp. He has shown some weaknesses, though. Like, there's a lot of um, different things that he might be focusing on in the game right now. I know there's this whole thing where he's going for like 2,800 ELO and whatnot. So maybe that's part of it. But like, for example, his game one against Ganji, the only game he's ended up losing, shockingly bad, right, from his, from his standards. And so I think for Hera, you want to come in here and you want this first game to be sharp. And if that first game's sharp, we were just talking about Hera's consistency. Really hard to stop the guy. And he's gone for the Mongols. The Mongols was one of the earliest picks here for Hera on his draft. It's one of the civilizations you absolutely want on this map. And I think he's going to skip fishing here. Normally, Scandinavia is a conversation of, of docking both sides. Um, and, you know, eventually uh, using that hunt for faster feudal, faster castle, whatever. Uh, you do see land aggression, but normally there's almost always going to be a dock. And I think Hera's strat, guys... I think he wants to bring in all of his boars really fast with the Mongols. And I think he wants to maybe stop the dock with his scout. Maybe go super fast archers. This actually reminds me of something that Leary had tried. Shoot, what event was it? Is Leary versus Viper. What? 14 pop with three boars with Mongols? Dude, guys, this is going to be amazing. And we're going to be like, holy crap, what a build order. Or it's going to fail miserably. This is insane, though. You couldn't do it with two boars. Oh, uh, well, okay. There he goes. He's up to feudal already. What? Oh, my goodness. But what's his plan? Is his plan just to dock the other side and kill the fish? That seems to be the plan. Okay, so it was. it just came to me. We had warlords. And it was uh, Leary versus Viper. And Leary tried the same thing. So he basically didn't add his own fish. It wasn't quite as fast. And I think Warlords was the nine villager start too. So it was a little different. But Viper ended up killing the Dockville that was coming across. And Viper defended and won the game later. So Hera's now seen the Dock from Capoch. But like, this is a standard build order from Capoch. And what did I say? Hera needs to come to play today. And this is just crazy, crazy strategy. Super bold, too. I mean, I'd be curious to see what his long-term is, too, economically. He will absolutely kill Capoch's fish. However, Capoch has 17 villagers he's working off of right now. Hera's got 13, and one's walking across the map. Like, the risk here is just the fact that you're killing your opponent's fish, but you don't have any fish of your own, and so you just don't really have a strong economy. But we get excited about the fast up times, right? We get excited about new build orders. Pre-seven minute feudal age. And no loom even yet for Capoch at this point, as he's probably a little confused. And he's got to fight this off. He doesn't lose a villager there, but the boar now goes back. And, oh, that's disastrous for Capoch. All because Hera's being annoying with the scout. Now, Hera shouldn't be able to kill the villager here. But Capoch will be able to bring in his boar. And Hera's making a fire galley. So yeah, like, if you're Capoch, you're going to lose your fish. And obviously, you're not going to be too excited about that fact. But you still have had some fishing ships. And Hera, he can't transition into anything else right now, right? <laughs> it's just killing the opponent's fish. Interesting build order here. Uh, does Hera have loom? Um, He does. I, I think he had researched it before he walked across the map. But yeah, like, honestly, if I'm Capwatch, you know, assuming he has the game sense here to know exactly what's going on, I could just play into land here and be pretty okay with it. Like, out of barracks, you also, if you really wanted to, you could send a, a villager this way and just dock that side. But you aren't expecting Hera to ever have fish here. 
Catpatch wanted to kill this villager, but but this is a little ambitious from him. He had pulled the dock villager away from his own dock, and now he's trying to wall in his scout here against Hera to save this villager. Or sorry, save the villager against Hera's scout is what I meant to say, and he had it for a second. He's trying again. Hera's blocking. Hera would usually never make the mistake there. And okay. And Hera's got no barracks. Catpatch still is going to have decent resources. Add a barracks and go archers, I say. Or maybe he's just going to fight back on water. That could have been why his villager had gone this way originally, so we could add a second dock. And Catpatch actually has a villager going this way. Now, let's see what Catpatch's game sense says, guys. Because if he knows the situation... Now, he probably has never faced this before, and that's what gets so tricky against a breaking the meta build order, which is what this is from Hera... If he can sense the situation, he should never even add a fire galley. Hera's never going to have fish at home. I wonder if Hera's checking that right now. Uh, Hera scouting around is going to add the blacksmith, which is a bit interesting. He's looking. Yeah, seems to be checking to see what Catpatch is up to. Love the Mongol scouting bonus, right? Obviously, you love the Mongol hunt, and that's benefited Hera. But the scouting bonus is really nice as well. And Catpatch is absolutely just going to fish on this side. So, Hera's killed four units this game. He now sees the dock is here. Can't do much about it. And Hera's going to need to contest against Catpatch on this side soon. And Catpatch sending another villager. But the thing that bothers me for Catpatch is that wood count. He could have had the barracks in the archer range. He could have some land pressure on Hera. Hera's just being super greedy here, right? Hera's trying to go fast castle off of this. Just to kill fast in castle age 2. And it's not the typical Hera play where he tries to go for that balance with Eco. Not even the typical pro play, you could say. But Catpaw just had opportunities. He's floating so much wood still. He's going to add the fire galley on this side. He will find nothing there. And Hera's going to go up. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be crazy and it's going to be aggressive. Catpatch will probably have the eco lead by the time Hera gets to Castle Age because Hera's running out of hunt. But Hera's Castle Age time is also insane, man. Insane into what? I still don't know. Um, I feel like Hera having his scout will be a big important thing here. Hera's probably about to lose his fish. We'll see, though. He does have the villager there to repair. Scout HP is important here. Hera's going to win the scout war. So now he's got a 4 HP scout to see exactly what Catpatch is going to do. And there are the fires. Hera has his own fire pulling out as well as a demo. Catpatch will produce out of both these docks. But guys, it just does seem like this is happening so fast for Catpatch right now. Look at this from Hera. Using the, the fishing ship, sacrificing it, actually worth it so we can win the fight. This is so crazy. Like, I, I need to reiterate this, right? Like, Hera will be at the limit. It's just whatever he makes has the potential to kill Catpaw really fast. He's not in a state where he can really switch into farms or anything. Or compete for these fishing ships. Or even compete for this in the in the long run, really. Which is why that fight was so important. These fights for Hera have happened in just the perfect fashion. Eventually, Catpaw will win water. Eventually, Catpaw will have more of a fish move. But if Hera can make a couple step lancers... Or a couple nights, he could just kill everything. It seems like that's exactly what he's going to be able to do. Uh, this shouldn't be enough for Catwatch. And it's just the early trades, the early kills have given Hera each of these time windows we've talked about. And wow, oh wow, man. I mean, you love to see it. I, I love to see creative builds like this. I, I do feel like this is one of those builds that only two or three players could probably get away with in competitive AB2. It's definitely like confidence build of like, yeah, I can do this against you. What are you going to do about it? I wouldn't honestly suggest it to anyone who's watching this, especially because the version of Scandinavia you'll play has wolves on the shoreline, which the devs have yet to remove. So uh, that would be a problem for you if you send a villager across. But um, but yeah, Hera's is going to have a couple steps. And let's see. Now he is housed at the moment, kind of at a bad time, which is giving Capwatch time to wall up. If Catpatch gets the walls down, Hera needs an extra step to this. I think it's important for Catpatch he kills these ships so Hera can't use the ships to take out the walls on this side. Mm. 
two farm food eco, and he's got one more deer here, Hera. Okay, resources collected. I'm super curious. See, he's still got more. But he does have fewer eco units. And the units are cheaper for Byzantines later on. Crazy game here. Hera taking that fish for whatever reason. <laughs> what were you thinking there, bro? He's going to lose that. Um, yep, going to lose that villager. Well played there, Capwatch. Hera here. We'll eventually maybe get out to kill the fish. He's actually using his step lancers here right now. Why did Capwatch make fires and not demos? Oh, no, I think everything he's done is fine. Capwatch... Capwatch has just been up against a really good player, and Hera did a really good job uh, staying on top of the numbers here. But the Byzantine fires have a habit of being able to come back in lower numbers because they work faster, right? I think Capwatch has played this very well. The only thing is I think there was potential for him to have archers and feudal. I just think he never expected Hera's play to be so ridiculously bold. But I mean, still now, you've got Hera like trying to compete on water... Is that the play, or should you be transitioning to land? It's very complicated. But I, I think that he's correctly assessed the situation and knows he does not want Capwatch to have the fish lead over him. So, like, he's doing a good job here, but so is Capwatch. And Capwatch will win that fight because it's a Byzantine fire. And Capwatch's fire ran away down here. Capwatch doesn't have farms, which Hera has. He's also going to be running out of his, his hunted teams. Couldn't take those two because of the panic walls. And Hera still with more fires than Capwatch, but Capwatch always with the ability to surprise. This has been a really interesting game. Yeah, can't the Lancers reach the Ville through the Palisades here? I thought they could. The fire ship's going to take care of it, though. Uh, Hera could lose his battle. No War Galley upgrade for Hera, too. I mean, he could have done that. And, and I think if he did that, he would actually have won water already on both sides. Again, he opted for the Lancers. It's so important for Capwatch that he doesn't allow Hera to use these fires to take out these walls. And Capwatch is heavy on stone here, possibly expecting like some type of a siege push from Hera. A really unique game. This is super cool, man. I'm so glad that Hera came to play. I, I would really like to ask him, as he's getting surprised here, I'd really like to ask him, though, if this was something that he had prepped with Leary, or I talked to with Leary. I can't wait to see more from Leary, actually, in Titans League for more reasons than one, but for the big reason of, will he try this if he gets Mongols on Scandinavia? Hera got his upgrade. Hera lands a perfect demo. That demo was sick. It's sad for him. He didn't kill those ships right away. And he does kill that Vil. It's 50 population right now versus 49, but Capod's dropping the town centers here. And the guy just does not have a lot on food. And Hera's got tons on food, so he could do a lot more. He's got better eco upgrades. And if those Step Lancers ever got in, this would be a horrible problem. And Capwatch didn't realize the pathing here. That this could be the game. Like, Hera could... If he gets through... If he gets through! Oh, he doesn't get through. Yeah, if he gets through, he could absolutely dominate. Uh, War Galley upgrades come in from uh, Capwatch. So he still can continue to fight on the water. And again, power Byzantines, right? He's going to actually win this little battle here. Take out Hera's fish. He still does have some fires on this side, though I think he will lose his fish, which will be painful for him because of zero eco upgrades. And Hera can now transition into land. So he just kind of eliminated the water aspect. And now in his mind, he's like, okay, this is a land boom game now. Neither of us have fish. That's perfect. Probably what he would have wanted anyways. Shout out to the Step Lancers who've been helping on water. And shout out to Hera's demo there. Man, zero eco upgrades is a painful one, right? This has been so cool. Hera should realistically be able to boom on 3 and 4 TCs now with this food eco. 16 farms with wheelbarrow. It's a crazy situation he's found himself in here. Everything had to go right, right? He had to kill the fish originally. He had to kill these fish when he did. Every single move had to go right, and he had to count on the fact that Capwatch wouldn't be able to hit him in time. And that would have been in that Feudal Age window we talked about. This is where the problem comes in, though, with your opponent having water control, is they can now take out the walls with their ships. But Capwatch, he's soon going to have the stone for a castle. 
And we'll see what he chooses to do. No dock on this side, though, is obviously very painful for him. I think he might even want to sneak one up. Over here, none of this is the biggest deal. He just doesn't want to allow Hera to fish much. Um, and Capoch is going to pull back. He's going to hit Hera with a massive demo, and so Capoch can still freely fight on this side. Hmm. Castle. Funnily enough, I think I'd place it here. <laughs> but, like, not if your buildings are already there. Oh, getting bit X right now has to be so painful. Uh, Hera actually spotted the monk there with his step lancers. Can we credit both players for an amazing game here, though, guys? Like, obviously, amazing build from Hera, and he starts this conversation. But Capwatch has probably never faced this before. I've said this about Capwatch and how seriously good he is in tourneys. Capwatch didn't die to it. Like, what's crazier, the build itself or Capwatch not dying to the build? Splits away from the demos here. Well played. Uh, or not, actually. He's going to get hit by both of them. Um, Ahara really needs to make sure he maintains control of his gold. And there will be a new dock for Capwatch. Again, he just doesn't want to have to deal with any harassment there. I think Hera should start to get relics right now. Um, I think it, it's like... It's definitely going towards late game. So getting a monastery out in the field would be really valuable. I think also you could also use the monks to get vision and convert things. Stop them. Stop the opponent from quick walling. It's crazy, crazy game here. Like Harris still collected more resources. Look at that food count though. Everything else, you know, not, not as crazy. Gold's pretty crazy too, to be honest. Kara's food income, it's just going to kick so much faster. It's going to come in so much faster. And the real concern when you're Mongols versus Byzantines is the timing on everything. Let's see what Hera does here. He's going to hear the wall low. If, he, if that would have been open, he wouldn't have dove in with his scout. But yeah, nice job there from Kapoch. Yeah, for Kapoch, he's just gotten to the farm count required to keep his TCs working. Hera's had that for a long time, and Hera has Wheelbarrow, and his farms are going to last much longer because of Horse Collar. So, now, the next the next part of this game that's important is Hera's recognition on where he places his castle and how he wants to pressure, because if he sees this castle, I think he should absolutely just castle here and go Imperial Age to treb that down. It's a bit weird, right? Because Byzantines are normally the ones who want to go for trebs. Uh, they don't really rely on Cataphracts in this matchup, and they want to stop the Mongols from getting to Mangadai. Nice job here from Capodge. But, uh, you know, the, this way this game is played out, Hera might be feeling pretty comfortable that even though the Byzantine Imp is cheaper, that he could actually beat the Byzantines to the Imperial Age. And, okay, I actually hate that position. I don't know why we're not building it higher up on the hill. But that could be him factoring in the treb range of his opponent. Man, I wish I had, like, a a way of showing if there was a treb here where the range would be that if that's why he's placed his castle slightly further back that's actually really smart because his treb will still be on the hill and will be able to access this castle but i think any trebs here might actually have to like leave the walls or something that, that's actually pretty crazy call there from hera i'd also be thinking about the market right now if i was Capwatch. And Capwatch comes in here at 5-1. and one. He probably just wants to get one win to feel comfortable from the series. Yeah, there, I could do Grid Mod, but I can't do Grid Mod with Capture Age. If I could do Grid Mod with Cap... Wait, actually, can I do Grid Mod with Cap Capture Age? Uh, graphics. Uh, grid... There's options for other things. Casting. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, shoot. Oh, go, 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 game. Yeah, so Hera's up. Sorry, guys. Didn't realize it would pause it at the same time. Yeah, grid mod looks horrible. It would look horrible with Capture Age. <laughs> and the reason I wouldn't want it to pick up my grid mod from in-game in Capture Age is because... I always play with grid mod, which would mean I need to remove grid mod in my game to cast anything, which would be a pain. 
Hmm. I think there is an option there. I just didn't see it. Catpaw is going to get relics, and he really wanted to drop a castle over there. What is that castle, bro? That's definitely not a castle you're going to be able to place here. And he sees Hera as his castle there. And he sees Mangadai as well, so he's going to add another second castle at home. I think this is how you have to play it if you're Capoch. But Capoch cannot mine any more stone, guys. He is stuck in his walls. The KD itself is very close. But just a crazy build order here from Hera with one of the best Scandinavian civs. You, you can't do it with any other civ, what he's done here. And you can always make arguments that it's not even worth doing it with Mongols because they can play standard as well really well, but... It surprised Capwatch, and I think it suits Hera's playstyle. It just allows him to be as aggressive as possible and takes the fish out of the equation. But something I mentioned about Hera is, like, the more water on the map, the worse he tends to play. Obviously, he's still very good on all settings. Now, the awkward thing for Hera will be that he wants to make Mangadai, and he needs castles to pr be producing to make the Mangadai. That seems like an obvious statement, but the reason that's important to bring up here is because Capoch isn't making cataphracts. He's going to make trebs. So he can produce army and trebs at the same time, in theory, right? And they're still fighting on water. Like, <laughs> it's crazy to me. They, they both just can't agree to give up on this, but that's because this position would be so valuable versus Hera later on uh, to deny some of those resources. And Hera also trying to break in here. This this actually would be really annoying. And I think it could actually be possible for him to break in. Okay, so... Again, where do the Trebs have to sit here? And will Catbotch be able to make Trebs out of both castles? He has to send his crossbowman over. He's got ballistics. Something Hera's missing. Hera... I don't know, man. Like, do you do you want to run in here? I mean, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You want to harass. You don't want Catpoch to push on the front. I'm trying his best to micro. Using some of that extra range. Treb's now out. Okay, Catpoch. When he puts that Treb on that castle, where does it sit? I think it's going to have to go over here. It's not doing anything yet. And Hera's actually not even Trebbing down the castle. He's going to Treb down the stable, which makes very little sense to me. But I guess you are up against Byzantines. It seems like he actually is, is using the castle to produce Mangadai. He's going to drop crazy stables. Hmm, Hera with stables. Never seen that before. It's that food eco, man. Yeah, look where that Treb has to sit. Holy crap. Dude, that's like such a crazy thing. If he would have placed the castle where I would have placed the castle, which it felt so natural... At the top of the hill. I, it would have been awkward for him. And he most likely would be losing this castle already. But now he's kind of baiting the opponent's army out in the field. But speaking of, Capuch, you got to produce more army, dude. He's got two ranges. This is this is a big problem. He has the wood. But I think it's just he doesn't... He's producing eco. He's producing things. He's trying to get upgrades. He's making traps. He's not able to focus on getting the numbers yet. And Hera wants to go for Light Calf in front of the Hussar, which is the... Or the Mangadai, sorry, which is the perfect play. But does he have an answer to this right now? He's got tons of castles. Like, these castles are from Mangadai production. This castle could still likely fall. He does have Elite Mangadai, though. Arbalest, 20 seconds away for Catpaw. He's got 12 of them. Ugh, that's rough. Byzantines have the ability to make a lot of army on the cheap, right? So the fact that he doesn't have more is really a problem for him. And Hera just waiting. It, it almost feels like if Hera snipes the Trebs, he's just going to win the game with all the map control. And here he goes. Now Catpaw has to focus down the Mangadai. And Hera's going to try and micro with the Mangadai and use the Mangadai to take out the Trebs. The Light Cav are going to be valuable here to get some extra kills. Army count, Catpaw actually has the lead. But Hera has the better army, and he is a better Civ in the long term here. At least, that's what most people seem to think. And obviously, he's had the position as well, as he will take the Trebs and just build another castle slightly further back. And he just backs away. 
Okay, no relics for Hera. Uh, hasn't thought that long term. He is getting Siege Engineers. Hera's been getting that a lot recently. He got that against Ganji, too. Remember, he had, like, no Hussar upgrade when he was making Light Cap, but went Siege Engineers against Ganji in that Ghost Lake game, which was interesting. Not a bad upgrade, right? Especially when your economy's this good. But, oh, man, you've just got Hera with crazy Mongol comp, right? Hussars with Mangadai. How are Byzantines supposed to stop it? Well, Byzantines are supposed to stop it with cheaper units and numbers. And then taking away the Mangadai option. There are 155 villagers right now. That's a pretty crazy boom. Only something to keep in mind here. Also, he's going to lose those villagers slowly to that war galley, which is kind of interesting. And Catbotch is so serious in tourneys, man. And not that others aren't, but like he brings a level of competitiveness every single time. I... I actually think both players are remarkably consistent. Hera obviously has the bigger peak. But the consistency Catpatch is able to bring to the table at like 35 or however old he is, is just incredible to me. But still just doesn't seem like he has the momentum. Hera has the buildings to spam the Hussars and the Mangadai. Hera is slowly chipping away at this castle and Catpatch wants to get over there to deal with it, but he just can't. The only way Byzantines beat Mongols is if they have the... Initiative, early imp. At least if we're talking like, you know, post-imp comps. It's just using the cheap camels, the cheap halbs, the cheap skirms before the Mongols can get there. And it feels crazy that we've actually had to go all the way to imp. But it has been the same theory and the same, you know, situation every single age here. Hera takes the, the fast initiative in one age and it gives him a slight advantage, which leads up towards the next age. I just against many people. I, I just could have seen this game not making it here. <laughs> you know, like... Huh. But, I, you know, I, I, we saw the strength and the weakness of the strategy, too, for Hera, right? It's like he'd punch fast, and then he wouldn't have a lot for a while. That's, like, how this whole game was designed and how this whole build order looked. And Hera just dives in for a fight, and I don't know if you guys have seen a pikeman get a kill, but I haven't. It feels like the pikemen have just been food for these Mangadai. And Hera happy to engage here, and Catpotch is going to be left wondering, like, what more could I have done against this strategy? That's the crazy thing, too. It's like, uh, you're, you've left, you're left reacting so consistently that you don't really have the time or, or feel like you have a window to ever do anything. It's just reacting. Sick game to start off this series, though. This is a real treat of a game. What was it? 14 pop? And it was... I think the 645 Feudal Age from Hera. And Catwatch is going to fight, right? He's making Pikemen. He's thinking, I've got some relics. I've, I've still got a castle. You know, there's there's reason to fight when you're not at 110 population. When you're at 150 population, you've got some things to work with. But, you know, that's just not going to last very long. And I think we can see that from here. And Catwatch will be... You know, he will be um, feeling it pretty shortly as well. Now, I do still want to go back and look at this a little bit. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like Hera's strategy and his execution here left a lot of vulnerabilities. But I think there was a moment in this game where maybe, you know, you you abuse the weakness uh, or, or like the um, the all-in-ness. I, I, I can't really think of a word for it, the aggressiveness, whatever, of Hera's strat. But the guy's just a beast, right? And he, he, he has the initiative now, too, so it's very easy for him to see things like this and be fancy with it. And Catpotch is just so so focused over here as he's still trying to spam arbs and skirms. He's got units in queue. He's got like 25 units in queue. But he was just very late to the production buildings. Crazy, man. I think Hera drafted Mongols first. Uh, someone, uh, we might need to double check that. I actually, it might have been second, actually. I forget what his first pick was. Remember, he picked Arena as a home map, which surprised a lot of people. I think maybe Turks was first. I don't know. It's all running together now. But uh, Catpatch is just going to drop a castle here. Uh, Harrow will have to back away. Catpatch's population has actually stayed the exact same, which is insane to me. Because everywhere I look, he's just dying. Um, also, how many kills? Let's go! This galley's killed 13 villagers. Maybe that's why he's playing on. 
Well, I mean, he's probably playing on because Skirms can kill Mangadai and Halves can kill Hussar. The problem is Hussar kills Skirms and, and Mangadai kill, uh, <laughs> kill Halves. <laughs> and you always want, like, the, the in general in Age of Empires 2, you want a uh, ranged comp with a melee comp, and one is gold and one costs only food and wood. Or just food in this case. So Mangadai Hussar is perfect because you can realistically focus everything on Mangadai all the time. And then you have the rest of your food uh, goes in towards Hussar. So food towards Hussar and then wood and gold on the Siege and on the Mangadai. And that's what Mongols are made of. Crazy play there from Hera. Now, again, I, I have to hand it to Catwatch because he played so very well. The fact that this game went to Imp, as we've stated many times already, was just wild to me. But remember when he had 600 wood? Does anyone else remember that? Okay, right when he makes it to feudal. What time did he make feudal? Let's say about 10.30. Okay, now now in his mind, right, he's got to spend wood and gold on this, and he's got to potentially spend wood and gold on this. But right here, like even before this, he's got that wood floating. So in my mind, the barracks could already be going up at the very least. Like that's a possibility, right? Hera's playing a based on what is possible all the time. He's at the limit with resources. He's spending it all the time here. He eventually spending it all the time here. And then he plays super open, makes no army, and there's this window, right? And I still am seeing the possibility there for Catpatch. Like, from 1216 back to the 10 minutes we looked at, there's still 300 wood. That's a barracks and an archer range. And, like, three archers... And Hera's eco from, you know, let's just go back to 12. 12 minutes, or however long it takes, to when does Hera hit Castle Age? 16. I mean, it's a really small window. But th that's your window there. You're holding on water, and Hera's just like, I'm being so aggressive that he can't hit me or he can't focus on hitting me. But it was there, right? It was there. It was tiny. But I think that is a big part of it here. Now, of course, there's, I think, losing your scout, there's a level of uncertainty to it. And then I think the other thing that's, that's like really difficult is playing two docks on either side and trying to macro and trying to go range and trying to make archers and trying to have good eco. Like, ultimately, Catwatch's style is very much the wall and play water player, too. But, you know, if there was a weakness to this, I think that's it. Now, as far as losing your initial fish goes, you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about that. Um, so you're just you're just going to have problems. Also, someone says Hera is just so consistently good. Capwatch is sometimes really good. Uh, I think that does a disservice to Capwatch. Capwatch played this game from behind the entire time to the Imperial Age and got to 170 pop and held on for a very long time. Capwatch has five wins and one loss, as did Hera coming into this very series. And we still don't know what the next games are going to hold. So I absolutely agree that Hera should deserve a lot of respect for this, but Capwatch is super good consistently and has shown that, man. And he's even better in tournaments than he is in ranked games, which a lot of people can't say. Capwatch is good. And I don't know why I just added a, a win there for Capwatch. Sorry, I forgot I didn't add the win initially. But just like a really good game to like break down and look at the strats and the pros and cons. And like, that's what you want. You want like the, the super fast aggression versus the defense and the comeback and the... The hybrid play versus the farms. Like, oh, that was so good. So I hope people enjoyed that one. And I'm really excited to see what happens in game two and three. So we have game two. Game two here on Cross. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm, I want to point out again that Hera didn't draft heavily for Cross. He picked Turks first, which is probably for his home map, which is Arena. He picked Mongols and then Portuguese second and third. Now, obviously, he's now played Portuguese. So maybe Hera actually intended to play Portuguese here all the time. But Capwatch didn't make it easy for Hera to decide on what to pick after that because Capwatch, because there's five picks, he basically picked up like Japanese and Malay and all these other civilizations that could be really good on cross. Uh, possibly trying to make life awkward for Hera as Hera was probably trying to get away with picking uh, two civs for Arena in the first three picks. I hope that's making sense for you guys. Again, you get five total picks, but it goes back and forth, right? And I think Capwatch said, I want one win. My best chance of win is cross, which is my home map. 
So let's just take all the cross civs away from him. And we'll play with my best cross civilization in Lithuanians. Now, Portuguese have cheaper gold units. They do have more HP on their ships. But, like, that bonus has been... That has been there for the Portuguese for some time. And no other players would ever pick Portuguese on this map. You're normally picking civs that have fish bonuses, that save a lot of wood. Um, or with Lithuanians, you... You kind of use all the fast food to have the fast dock, which gives you a good edge. Um, yeah, I'm a little surprised that Hera didn't try Huns. Um, even Dravidians. Like, I think Dravidians would actually be better than Portuguese at the map. But... I mean, you know, Hera, like, he might try something more land-focused here. Like, I think Hera's got the skill to just say, I'll, I'll dock initially, and then I'll just switch into land army and not worry about fish as much. But Catpatch's thing, and this is a Lithuanian thing too, he loves to dock your initial pond. So, I, it wouldn't shock me if Catpatch goes out the scout and tries to find Hera's pond, and then first thing just tries to get a dock down. Yeah, Italians could have been good, too. But you get some wood from foraging. Yeah, exactly. But on a dock build, you can't go for the mill early, right? So you're not actually... And I don't know if you're saying that... Implying that that's not a good bonus here or not. But players want to take advantage of bonuses as quickly as possible because they snowball every bonus to a greater strength. And so that's why, like... The Gurjaras would also be weird here because you mill early and you delay wood income because you can't fish. That's also why Gurjaras being able to garrison ships in their dock is a bit of a weird bonus. Though I suppose in theory, if it like, I don't know, like I feel like there was a wacky world where Gurjaras could have some crazy things happen. Why well, no Persians on cross? Yeah, Persians are a relatively common pick as well or have been over the years. So, you know, it's one of those deals. If Hera ends up losing the game, we're like, what on earth were you doing? No one else does this. You clearly didn't know what you're doing on this map. If he wins the game, we're like, okay, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's always very tricky. Now, Catpatch will always send the bill. Like, he's going to send the bill fast here, I think. Let's see if he's thorough here. He loves to send that villager forward. Oh, he's actually walling. Well, I would do that against Hera as well, to be honest, when I think Hera's going to come land. Um, could Gurjara Dock Garrison be good for when aggression comes in? Saves the ship briefly, get a bit more food? Yeah, but... Oh my god, I just burped in the mic. I'm so sorry. At least you guys didn't have to smell that. Um, yeah, but... No one's going to competitively pick Gurjara's because they... Uh, for any map that has water, because of how bad it is for their start. So I like the bonus. I agree with someone else. I kind of feel like someone else should have that bonus. Because at least if you're talking competitive play, you're never going to see it. It's a really cool thing that could be useful, but not going to see it for anyone else. Hmm. Will Hera send a vill? Why is Catpatch sending a villager this way? To wall? Yeah, to wall. And there's... Okay, Catpatch is sending the vill. Hera is adding Militia. Catpatch is going to wall and sneak dock. This is Catpatch's favorite strategy. He adds extra fishing ships on his pond and is super greedy. And then he will always sneak to your ponds. And if it, things go according to plan, he will kill your fish and then have like six fishing ships. And then he's super far ahead and only needs to defend with walls. Okay. Yeah, I would really like to see a game where fishing ships being saved in a dock made a big difference. And yeah, not all bonuses have to apply to competitive play. I agree with you guys. But I, it's a cool enough bonus where I'd like to see it, you know? Such a good job from Catpatch to track this, by the way. Like, I, I cannot state that enough. And Hera is just adding fishing ships. Catpatch is going to go for defense. Now, Catpatch doesn't have his dock yet because he's had to go for the mining camp and he's got a wall and, oh, he's just put himself in such a crazy position here. Catpatch needs to wall in his vills here and Hera's not going to let him. 
Cat punch. Even if you can just wall in two, you do it. Even if you just wall in two. Oh, that's so good. And you gotta wall a bunch more, and you also gotta get this dock down before Hera can block it or spot it. Hera's fishing over here so he can see a potential dock. So he knows what he's doing there. And Catpatch is building the dock already. If Catpatch can just defend with archers now, he's in an amazing position. And Hera's going scouts? This is so weird, man. Again, nobody else is doing this stuff. It doesn't really suit the map, but it is aggression. And Catpatch's defense here has looked so clean so far. I just heard a villager die, I thought. Did you guys hear death? Hold on. Right here. Death? No? Okay. I I'm hearing things. Sorry, guys. So, the wall defense, the, the archers, we're going to catch up to live time now. The archers can kill the man-at-arms. And this dock is up now. And Hera is going to make a fire galley. But there's going to be two docks in his pond. And all Capwatch needs to do... Ah! is he needs to make sure he micros these archers against these man-at-arms. And what he won't be expecting is the scout pressure. Hera now brings the scout over here and Capwatch again, just with the walls here. So the only real mistake here um, was the fact that he lost that archer. Um, he's, he's still working to get full walls. He also, you know, might be a little confused as to why Hera has that scout there, but he's probably thinking that that's the original scout. He doesn't see more than one. And Hera getting wheelbarrow on a map with no farms. Again, that's just... It's it's Hera, right? So he could absolutely win this game. But that's not this map. That, that's not actually a beneficial upgrade right now. I think for him, he got housed and he's been under pressure. And he so greatly wants to get to the next age too. So I saw the market there. And here's Hera. Now, here's... Here's the thing that needs to be talked about more, and this is why Hera's so good at it, is the... All of Hera's focus is just on one thing. And so the... You know, the play from Catbotch, he's got to focus on six different things. But in terms of the potential, what's possible here, you just have such great potential if you fish, which you can see in the eco count right now. And, you know, if you were to talk about a player who's got potential to do a million different things at once, I think Hera's certainly... You know, at the top of that conversation, at the top of that list. Again, Catbotch under some pressure here from Hera. He's killed five eco, though. He's only lost one. And Hera's just going to completely lose his pond, and he's going to have, like, two, fishings over the two fishing ships over there. So, what I think you need to do if you're Catbotch? Uh, first off, you need to counterattack right now. Uh, you've got an opportunity to do that, but you need to be walled. I needed to fish, and you need to get to Castle Age. And Hera, just like the previous game, he's got a window here. He's got a tiny little window in Castle Age to kill with, like, Knights and Siege or something. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I guess I had heard a Hera scout die, and I didn't see it. And Hera's gonna get armor now. He's spending food on scouts to defend from these archers. But, guys, what's his food income gonna be? <laughs> It might not be able to say this very frequently, but this is just not a good build. This is bad, man. <laughs> Hera's got no food. And Catwatch is going to fish all the ponds. He's playing this map as he should, man. Now, Hera needs to defend himself from this force. Because if you lose five or six villagers to archers before you're in Castle Age, you are 100% dead. And he's going to have to buy a lot of food here, I think, and, and maybe seed some farms. Catwatch sees the scouts and sees the upgrades, so decides to hide the archers. And mass a couple spearmen, too. Catbotch is so good on this map, but he's such a good tourney player. Remember last game, he could have so easily died. Great micro there. And Hera's been looking for that army. And Catbotch is now going to sneak around. And I think if he's got, like, three or four spearmen with his uh, archers here, he could will happily fight these scouts. Hera's not even going to be able to afford to make a single knight. So that's uh, that's a problem, and Catpatch is going to be able to afford to do anything. He can get eco upgrades. He can make knights. He can make he can get the crossbow upgrade. Now he might not do that because he might not actually have the units. Here goes Hera to engage, and Hera just didn't quite have bloodlines there. Now here's what's tricky: if you have a hole in your wall or you let the scouts in, suddenly everything falls apart. So you got to make sure you don't do that. 
And Catwatch is just running forward into Hera's base. Lock the gate, Catwatch. And he does do that. He, he has to know. He's so experienced on the map. He has to know Hera can't make a lot. He's not respecting Hera here. He's like, okay. Uh, you, I, I'm just going to go to your base then if you're not going to kill my army. And so there's some crazy hype after the first game. Deservedly so. But this is why Catwatch picks this map, man. And, you know, for Hera, it, Cross has always been a tourney map. So if he loses this game, I, I do think you have to think, like, what's the deal, dude? This is not a new map. You're a really good player. I think Hera could absolutely play the meta on this map. He's got four scouts. He didn't lose a lot there. He lost another villager near the tail end to the archer. It's going to be Monks. If Catwatch were to mix in his own scouts to end up getting uh, killing the monks, I think he wins this game easy. This falls into a territory of massive throw if Catwatch loses this game, actually. But the crazy thing is it's still possible because Hera's got a few more knights. Monk swings can always change things. There's palisade walls instead of houses. Just awkward moments to come here for Catwatch. Oh god, Hera's gonna convert the bill too. You can see it. You can see it coming. You can see it. He's repairing now. Adding knights. He's getting lots of upgrades as well. He's getting iron casting. How's Hera looking? Okay, he's kind of producing knights. He's also trying to produce monks. The monks are very cheap, we should say. No monastery for Catwatch too. He's adding it now. He's still trying to keep these units out. If he donates the knights, they have a lot of attack upgrades. And I think the knights are actually in here. Panic time for Catwatch. You're kidding me. Oh, man. Hera should never get away with this, dude. Catwatch is oh, he's feeling so much pressure. The eco difference is insane. Even if you lose the gold miners, you're okay. As long as you make scouts and kill the monks. You, you can't just rely on just making... The knights. Well, actually, now Hera's actually converted villagers. So he doesn't actually have conversions. There's a possibility there. Hera's still making knights. He's still kind of making monks. His eco's good enough for this. And he's losing his fish in the north. Catwatch is adding more. He's doing what he needs to do. He's going to be adding his own monks. And that's going to be awkward. If Hera has the scouts out. And this is the type of thing you need to do if you're Hera and he kills a monk. Oh no, dude. Catwatch did everything right. Is he actually going to lose this game? Ay, 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 ay. This is why Hera does it, man. Because he can, he could just force his will onto the opponent with this aggression. And the, the monk conversions have been so clutch for Hera. And again, Catwatch, I'm wondering, like, where are the light cap, bro? Can you control your units here? Oh, no. He's lost the scout to a conversion. Hera could deny the TC. Catwatch is still so far ahead. But you need to kill Hera's monks. Oh, the TC gets denied. I cannot believe what I'm witnessing here. Catwatch is still adding fishing ships. He still should win this game. But if he doesn't have gold, he can't make monks. And if he doesn't have monks... Who knows what could happen? Now, Hera could maybe reasonably switch into a second TC at behind this as well. He's got 13 knights, two more on the way, and he's consistently making monks. I want to show you this real quick for Hera. He's been creating units 50% of the time. Now, he's had them a lot longer. Catwatch. Wow, that's actually crazy. 95% of the time. So there's actually been no shortage of production for him there. All right. Now, Catwatch does have a TC on this gold. And Hera has zero fishing ships. Hera's just looking for monks right now. I love the iron casting choice from Catwatch. Because that, that gives him a nice opportunity to snipe the monks from Hera. But Hera's still got so many knights as a buffer there. It just feels like it just is not something you can easily approach. And then if Hera loops in with the scouts, Hera can kill the monks. And that monk is somehow... Okay, it survives. Now the light cap go in. Hera got really close to the TC. Hera backs away. Oh god, his unit control is insane. Oh my goodness, his unit control is so smothering. 
The light cap have to go kill these monks, and the knights have to stay away. The knights have to stay away. You cannot donate any knights here to have a chance here for cat watch. Otherwise, all this, all, everything behind this dies. Monks going down there. A lot of the monks are dying now. Most of the monks are dying. The knight numbers will be 19 versus 10, though. And Catpatch doesn't have his own monks to get conversions. Holy crap. Counterattack from Catpatch. I like that move. Hera hasn't faced up against that in a while. With Hera with idle time now and having to pull villagers away. Allows Catpatch to run out and kill more monks. And that, that was perfect moment there for Catpatch. But can he afford to make the knights now? <laughs> Hera's got so many knights. Oh, and he's, he's waiting. He's waiting for a monk. He knows there's going to be a monk coming eventually. Dang, man. This is an insane game. Hera's going to win it. Hera's actually going to win this just because of night numbers, isn't he? Oh, man. What a tilter for Catpatch. What a, what a ridiculous win. It, it definitely feels like it should fall into the category of should never happen. But, again, just Hera imposing his will... And Catpatch knows he, that he should never lose this game. He knows. He, he also sees the score. Like, he knows he's got a crazy eco lead. He should absolutely continue to play. But if Hera just finds the eco spots with knights, it, the eco count will look very different in a second. Uh, it's got 10 knights. Hera's got 27. Just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff here. Hera needs to, to win this game. Hera needs to send knights here. Catpatch, even if this TC is just garrisoned, absolutely cannot deal with this. That's the biggest thing. It's just Hera not realizing that Catpatch is on that gold. Catpatch can't take gold anywhere else. Catpatch does have extra attack. He gets a conversion. He does have a couple monks inside the TC. But it's 12 knights here. And Hera's got 15. And Hera's just got the numbers. And Hera's got the production. And Hera's getting the better of the engagements. And now it's going to be five knights for Catpatch. Oh, I'm so gutted for Catpatch here, man. I'm so gutted for him. This was his win. He played it so well. And, and now Hera knows about the gold, too. Yeah, and that knight will just be converted. Dang. But, but you know, the question is, like, someone... Let's say Hera loses this game. Like, somehow Catpatch still wins. I think it's... It's going to be really tough now. But let's just say that happens, right? Hera has done well enough here where we now know why he doesn't play into the pawns. Like, I still think it's fair to say, dude, you've got the talent. Do it. But if he could just do this and get wins against a player of Catpatch's caliber, why not, right? Why, why would you not do it? He's going to convert a knight there. Saves the villager. Well played. 42 eco versus 64, but the resources coming in now is going to be really bad for Catpatch. The, the fish has kind of run out in a lot of these pawns. Again, Hera, in my opinion, just needs to be hitting the gold here to win this game. That's something he hasn't done yet. And Catpatch consistently trying to counterattack now against Hera. And Hera's still all in. It, what an entertaining series, man. Like, lots of all in strats from Hera, all series. There's kind of a monk on the way. Catpatch wants to keep the TC up. Also, we'll loop in here for a counter. Hera gets conversions here, and it's going to be so disheartening for Catpatch. TC is actually staying up. Monk will come out in a second. Catpatch knows this. Hera was waiting. Hera knew. Monk pops out. Monk will... Get a conversion and die. TC's down. Catpatch's eco's a wreck. Okay, resources collected. Oh. Even just, like, pikemen, like... I think producing units while you're on the way to Castle Age here is the difference maker for Catpatch. Producing two barrack spears or even just scouts before you make it to Castle Age. What?! Air converts a light cap. Has to be said, he's gotten some fast conversions. But then again, he's gone for like 100 of them. So you go for 100 conversions, you're going to get some fast ones here or there. Yeah, this this is all we've been waiting for, right? Hera just needs to keep Catwatch off of gold, and this game is over, and poor Catwatch. Yeah. 
I mean, I was expecting Capwatch to garrison. Capwatch. But he seems to be distracted. Not sure exactly what. Maybe he just didn't have that on his screen. And this is probably where we'd see the GG called in most cases. Era just smashing him, dude. Just smashing him. But yeah, you know, it, it's it's frustrating and it's a relatable loss. I don't know about you guys. Like, did you ever feel like you do everything right and then you make one mistake and you lose a game in Age of Empires 2? That's a big problem for me. I, I feel like I have good strategy and I know what I need to do. And then stuff like this can sometimes work against me. And the um, and it's a frustrating feeling. When you play to the night, to the Civ's potential, and you play to the map's potential, and then just strong commitment, man. Strong commitment with, like, all-in knights or crossbows or something can work well against you. A cat punch probably feeling a bit tilted at the moment. And the monks are just going to convert more knights if this continues. And, yeah, I mean, you just don't have eco right now if you're cat punch. You can't make army. And while Hera was in a fragile all-in state for a while, his eco is now far ahead of Capwatch's because he's killed so much. But, like, resources collected, this should tell the story. Still, Capwatch has the lead. Like, that should give you an idea. If Capwatch has the lead right now after he's lost 50 eco before our eyes, imagine how big of a lead he had when the push actually started. Hera's just going to go take the docks now. Hera's going to get redemption now to convert buildings. But what Capwatch hasn't really seen is he hasn't really seen all of the farming eco. He doesn't know Hera's population. But yeah, this is this is over for him. He's going to try and kill the monks. He's going to tilt himself more when he doesn't kill them. And he's going to have to tap out here. Dang. Two really felt well-fought games from both players. Hera's going to be up 2-0 in this series. Feeling like a champ. Uh, Hera walled in his monks there, looks like. Just wanted to save them. But yeah, like, even the fishing ships won't even be able to work soon once the docks go out down, right? Knights attacking the light calf. We'll kill that. Here, Hera will still have some knights and monks left over. Like, Capo just trying. But, again, I think the frustration is there. Uh, Kevin says if he had a sneaky TC somewhere else, he'd be fine. But he doesn't, so he's dead. No, I, I don't think he would be fine. It's an army... It's all about stopping the, the uh, army momentum from Hera here. And so I want to go back. Again, it's like super brutal for Capwatch to lose this game. But Hera did such a good job. So let's go back. Their uptimes, what were they? Um... Okay, 1959 and then 2030. So let's just go to when Hera clicks up at 1959. Or, or let's let's go 16 minutes, actually. Okay. So first off, Hera's castle age time was really, really strong. I think if he's up a minute later, this probably doesn't work. Uh, considering he lost all of his fish, I guess he used the market a lot. Yeah, he used the market a ton. But that was a really important job from him here. Um, but okay, so Catpatch is on the way. Now, I want you to look at something. Capwatch knows his opponent has scouts. His opponent has added a monastery. And also knows that his opponent doesn't have lots of food eco. So safe to say, if your opponent's up as fast as Hera's up, this is an all-in, okay? And all-ins normally incorporate the monks. And those monks are huge because the player with the stronger economy has the eco to make more knights. But the monks convert those knights and also lead to healing of your army, etc. So Hera gets max value. So, obviously way easier said than done. But right now, you need the stables instead of the fishing ships. You've got 16 fishing ships. You're good. You need the stables and you need to be producing scouts. And if you get to right about here... See, look. Now he's about to be in Castlage and now he has the stables but no scouts. Look at his food. That's, that's where the game is lost right there. Is just simply not having scouts. If he's got like five to six scouts and then he goes into knights, I don't think Hera ever gets a snowball. Because it'd be so easy. Like this monk, dead. Any monks that come forward, dead. Micro with the scouts. And then you, obviously he was r trying to keep the units out. And then Hera got in, which made it awkward. But I think even still, like, you open with your own monastery and you're making knights behind five or six scouts and this strategy never works. So I think Hera... Um, 
hey, he showed how freaking good he is with his army control and his all ins. But that's still not optimal for the map. And it's, you know, it's going to be something that you wouldn't expect it in like, well, if you're a Hera fan, you would hope you wouldn't expect it in, in, um, in like later stages of the tourney. Group stage, obviously, not, not that big a deal. I got to stop talking, actually. I think they're starting the next game. Um, okay, they haven't actually started it yet, so I'm going to continue talking. But yeah, even though Catwatch lost so much, actually, I wanted to see first, like, 20 minutes, resources collected. So here, you've invested into everything, and watch it grow over time. He's dying, and it's still growing over time. So it's just using the additional food to snipe the early monks, and then you have Night Monk, and you could probably make more knights, and you could be okay. I, I would be... I'm actually tilted for Catwatch. He played it so well. But, I mean, Hera played it so well, too. Hera's aggression's nuts. This is the equivalent... Uh, what Hera just did there is the equivalent of, like, someone on Arena being 30 or 40 villagers behind and going knight treb push. It's just constantly pushing the opponent to the point where their economy doesn't matter because you're converting their units or they're constantly taking out their buildings. So... um. And all of which are very tricky to deal with. <laughs> okay, so game three. Uh, we will obviously chill and I'll get to answer questions and I got some to get to here as it's Dark Age on Arena. Not too much happening. Uh, but Capwatch has gone for more of a classic Arena pick. Uh, you know, last year, maybe the year before, a lot of people would pick Malay. And there's some really cool things you can do with the Malay. So I'm excited to see them back on Arena. Uh, players will use their ability to advance faster to the next stage. To their advantage, there's... Either the standard fast castle or the fast feudal build behind eco upgrades, both of which I'll talk about when I see what Catwatch is going for. Uh, so it's pretty unique to them. And then the Turks also have two common plays. Uh, they go for the Janissary uh, or they go for the like light cap play. And I think going into the light cap play fits Harris style more. And I think it's also a little bit better for the matchup, though. I think it, it is also a stylistic thing. So it being a stylistic thing, you would expect Hera to be going for scouts and booming. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, Turks are also classic arena. That's true. <laughs> but Turks are also present-day arena meta, and Malay have kind of fallen out of that conversation a little bit more. Uh, you tend to see Bohemians and uh, Burgundians and Turks and uh, Poles, um, and maybe like one or two other civilizations a bit more, even Aztecs more than them. I think, I think Turks are better. I also think Hera has been playing really confidently and he's been in really good shape. Um, but maybe Catwatch needs some Stonewalls, man. Like, he's been up against some crazy aggression. Maybe the Stonewalls will actually end up benefiting him more than anything. <laughs> so. You think the map looks like a duck? Um, I'm not seeing it. I'm kind of seeing like a like a big old spider actually. And I'm not a big spider guy. Obviously you don't see all the individual spider legs, but like or I don't know, some type of spaceship. <laughs> or Mickey Mouse, but Mickey Mouse if he's having a bad hair day, maybe. <laughs> oh, the duck like is this the duck's head? I mean kind of. I could see what you're talking about. Um, I think I think Catwatch would be wise to go for the Feudal Age build, but let's see. I will explain exactly how Malay will play it once I see if Catwatch is going to click Feudal Age here or not. Let's put it that way. But I think the key in this is going to be, and this is very common with Arena, is imp timing and uh, early siege army type pushes. Like, I think the... Free Hussar upgrade for the Turks is obviously very strong, and Hera loves to go for Hussars. But if Malay can open with, like, Halberdier and Trebuchets and get a good little push going and break into the Turkish base, I think it could be good. A lot of that will be on the back of whatever um, army control they're going to go for, though. Seahorse. Maybe. Maybe. I don't see the frog, either. Unless, like... No, nope, not seeing the frog. Okay, so Catwatch is going to go normal Fast Castle. 
I'll tell you what the other build is, because that was the one I was more excited about to talk about. So, um, basically with Malay, you can go 20 pop fast feudal. And then rush your eco upgrades. So you go wood upgrade, farm upgrade, uh, farm, 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 obviously. And then eventually click castle. And then if you do that, your castle time is still, I think, just after 15 minutes. So instead, because you advance so fast to the next stage, what you want to do if you're cap watch, if, if he's not going to do that, is you don't want to click up at 25 or 26 pop here. We might even see like 20... Eight population in Dark Age, which is really uncommon. But again, it's just because you get up to the next stage so fast. Mm, is Hera going to go YOLO again? Oh, 24 pop. I'm personally liking the aggressive theme from Hera. Um, his aggressive builds are really fun to watch. I think you might see it a bit more frequently just because of the you know he feels like this is a good matchup for him i don't think it's something that he would necessarily do in a semi-final uh though maybe maybe he will i don't know like back when i first started watching Hera, uh which was in like 2015 or 2016 uh he was always known for like being super fast and aggressive and in his rise to the player he is today, he became more and more defensive and more eco-focused and more defensive and castles and Hussar spam and things like that. But the aggressive stuff, he always has the option to do and the skill to do. But I'm, I'm again, a little confused. Because optimal plays for Turks would be going to stone and for Jannies. Or it'd be going for the light cav build. Uh, looks like he's still trying to go for the light cab. It just won't be perfect. A lot of players are going to add that one extra vill. But he's definitely, like, really adapting here. Trying to get the things to the limit here. Like, normally in my situation, or, or if I were to do this, I it would bother me. I can't get my wooden farm upgrade right after clicking up to castle. But he's barely going to drop that off. And he's going to still go and try light cap. All right. Now, cap watch went up a little faster than as well that I as I mentioned. Also still kind of at the limit with food. But similar to hair up. Just barely going to get there, I think. But yeah, what's the timing on Hera's eco upgrades here? I don't know if this is really optimal, guys. Like, I feel like an idiot because he's playing so good, but it absolutely is suboptimal. <laughs> Not trying to be judgy. It's Arena, bro. This is a bad build. <laughs> he shouldn't be placing farms at this point without Horse Collar. You should have your wood upgrade right away. You should have Horse Collar right away, and then you should be making your second scout. Actually, one of those situations where adding the... Or being, it, you're faster to cast Lage, but you're in a worse position with making the Light Cav and with your economy. But, you get the Monastery faster. And I think the Monastery faster is a plus. Okay, Capwatch. Just going to boom, I guess. So, not showing any signs that he's really going to compete for Relics. And I would really like to see him just straight boom then. Because I think trying to send Monks out when you've got Turkish Light Cav is a risky game to play. And the Malay player will have more villagers working because they spent less time researching that next stage. Again, power of the Malay and a big reason why people pick the Malay frequently on Arena. And so Hera has to choose between Light Cav and Eco upgrades, right? But in the previous game, he also went for a suboptimal play and it was like smash, smash, smash your face and you're dead. And it worked, right? <clears throat> So I don't know. I don't think the build is great. Everything's going to be delayed based on what he wants. But on the bright side, his opponent's not adding any scouts. And so uh, he's able to just live off two light cav and probably doesn't need any more anyways. <clears throat> Why make light cav when a few spears do the trick? Well, the spears are, are actually not going to do the trick because spearmen are very slow and then spearmen don't have a bonus against monks. So at this level, anytime someone's making spearmen and sending them through the middle expecting light cav, 
the players just bring their monks out and they convert all your spears and then they don't lose the light calf because they avoid the spearmen. So they, so they simply just get converted. So you kind of need some type of threat to the... Um, you need some type of threat to the monks if they're going to be out there. Because I think spearmen, it takes like 10 hits to kill a monk. It takes a really long time. But it's a good question. It's not, it's not a bad question and I'm glad people ask it. But I also need to explain why you don't see it, you know? So Hera will likely get the relics. Still not working off of his Castle Age wood upgrade. The five relics will obviously be helpful addition. But then you get stuck, right? When you're booming and you're spending your food on villagers all the time, you get stuck without these upgrades. That really hurts. <laughs> This is why, <laughs> I, listen, I, there's a lot of people that have been coached by a lot of players and, and everyone's got different styles and whatnot. It's really good. But for me, dude, like I would never, I could never get coached by like Viper or Hera, let's say, because they can get away with doing suboptimal things because of their skill. But so I wouldn't, I cannot relate to situations they fall into, right? Like, I feel like any coach should be screaming, ah! Like John Slow, all the arena guys would be looking at this and they're like, what is this build order? And then we fast forward like 30 minutes from now and he's going to win the game. <laughs> um, I just, it, it's just a, another level which I can't relate to. <laughs> Anything you tell me, I can't do that. I need to rely on the, the economy and, uh, you know, timing on certain things. There's the wood upgrade though, so he's gonna get that, and I think part of his thinking was Malay's gonna be so fast to the TCs. I need to. Ooh, interesting. Um, he's probably thinking Malay's gonna be so fast to the town centers that I need to to get there a bit faster. Hera's got no loom, by the way. So Capwatch thinking about killing Vils, and Hera's gonna add TC number three. Capwatch should see that and be like, ooh, okay. TC number three. So, I mean, you, you kill the monk, but now you can't kill any of the other monks. I, I think you take it, though, because there's no guarantee you would have killed the other monks in the first place. And this scout, ultimately, I, I think what it does is it just keeps Hera a little more distracted and annoys him a little bit. Again, does it really take much away from Hera's APM? Eh, maybe not. But it is something, and if you had another scout, it'd be epic, because then you loop in and you kill all these, but you don't have scouts right now, so. No, I think Hera's, Hera's uh, houses on the edge of the map is actually really underrated. Uh, it's something I started to do a lot more frequently this year on Arena, because if you just plop the houses down anywhere, you then sometimes need farm space, and then you don't have it. So I, I think this is actually really good, especially because you're producing out of three town centers, and then you also have, um, in some cases, the monastery and the stable producing. But yeah, like, Hera having to to chase with the light cav, not a big deal because there's nothing else in the middle. Okay, so opening for cap watch, that's what people have asked. Um, I think Halb Bomber Cannon. <clears throat> but, but, I think the important thing, too, is that your initial castle is, is kind of forward. I don't think you want a defensive castle without the relics. Why not build houses behind the wall? Well, because opponent monk can convert it. They can get destroyed easily. You're not, you're not going to want to farm here. You're going to want production buildings here. Houses behind the wall isn't bad. Like, what Catwatch is doing isn't bad. But I think either one, right? Like, I think houses behind the wall or houses in the back of the base is best. For, for not all of them. So don't be like, start the game and go place your houses there, low evil legends, okay? Uh, but once you get your eco rolling, it's a good decision. So, Capwatch... So, so what Hera's doing here... Sorry, let me start with that. He's actually done a really smart thing. So what you want to do to stop the fast push is you just want to apply any sort of pressure and dropping a, you know adding a few mangonels can be really helpful and it can force Capwatch to place his castle defensively even though there's not a lot out here 
under or over make army. It just does something and gives yourself time to catch up. Hera's adding more light cap. What? That's so weird. Oh, he's expecting Arbalest opening. He's expecting Arbalest opening and he wants to go full Castle Age. But Catpatch is going Pikeman too. I like this is so weird to just make more light cap here. But then again, Catpatch is not expecting it. And he could take losses, and this could actually be good for Hera to keep Catpatch in here for a while. You see what I mean about the monks converting the spearmen? Catpatch makes it to Imp. But what's his timing going to give him here? Why did he leave his base? Especially after he saw the three light cab and the two monks. Okay. There he goes. Monks are helping. Hera's got some siege. Good little pressure. Love to see Hera maybe just stop making light cap for the time being. You see your opponents making pikemen, so maybe just chill out. Uh, I'm a little confused here at what Catwatch was thinking there. But it's perfect for Hera, right? Because Hera, it, even if he doesn't kill everything, he's just annoying Catwatch, and it gives himself so much time for everything else he wants to do. And he's still making light cap but those light cap have found value you've got a villager dying here you've got a crossbow dying here and cap watch is an imp he doesn't have a single imp upgrade here it's pressure from Hera dropping more stables now cap watch dropping a fourth TC still trying to go arbalest still doesn't have the upgrades I don't know man I feel like cap watch is a little overwhelmed here with this series because they're you know, the previous game with crazy pressure that he was up against, really hard to... Much easier to say what could have happened. But, like, here you open... You go Halb right now, and you win the game. He's an open Halb. And Hera loses everything. He's still trying to micro here with his, uh, with his crossbowman. Hera's been adding monks to convert the pikemen, which is not a statement I thought I would say. And Catwatch lost his crossbows there. Still adding in more pikes. It's just super, super messy here. Which benefits Hera. The messier it is, and the, the more Hera delays, the more he has the relics, and then the better his late game will be. You're just keeping Malay in their base. Oh, poor Catwatch, man. Yeah, he's he's just struggling. I think that the pace of the game, maybe being a bit rattled after the previous games, is just falling apart. It's just a super messy arena game right now. Just needs to take some deep breaths, add a few production buildings in the back, in the back, and maybe not try, you know, not engage as early. Uh, but he continues to engage, and I think he's doing so because he's an imp faster or something, so he feels like he has to do it. But he's just tossing all these units away constantly. This is so rough. And Hera's just making light cap, but he's not up against. Uh, I guess he's up against Bracer, which is which is imp. But, like, Catpoach has been an imp for, like, five minutes. And Hera hasn't really committed that much. Well, casually, Hera just drops a castle. And, yeah, if I'm Hera, I'd just go imp, man. Like, like this has been disastrous for Catpoach. He's completely thrown his early imp timing. He's, he doesn't know, seem what he... Like, he knows what to do here, and... Now he's got to go for damage control. But damage control when you're an imp versus Castle Age and your economies are fairly even? Not very good. I think it's the classic case of fast imp into no army. Like, you, you get imp so fast, and you don't have an army yet. And then he, I think, assumed that pikeman crossbow would have been enough. Which is why he stayed out there, but maybe he just didn't know Hera was going to make more. Like, I, I think Hera, Hera adding as many like have as he did was the issue here. But no, I think Catpatch is a little tilted. <clears throat> Having been there before, and then you just get more tilted and more frustrated because you... You're like, damn, that was so obvious. Like, how did I? How did this actually work? How is this suboptimal play actually working? I should like never die to this. You know, you start to think those types of thoughts. But I don't know what it is. Like, why is it working? Why? Why? I mean, game two worked because of a crazy commitment, and Capwatch didn't make scouts. It worked here because 
because Catwatch didn't expect it? Like, is that the underrated thing about it? Is just it was so bad that it was good? I don't know, man. It's a frustrating thing to be 3 0 though, when you could have won every single game. In game 1, I think it always felt like that was all Hera, but that was still manageable. Game 2 should have been won by Catwatch. Game 3, I don't even know what to make of what we've seen over here the last couple of minutes. And Catwatch gets his castle up, and now Hera just clicks the imp, and Hera just has to, again, hold. Added a few Janissaries. He's just been converting any crossbow or, like, pikemen that he sees. And, uh, like, have been clearing up the rest. Still no Arbalest upgrade, no Bracer. Or, sorry, not Bracer, no Chemistry. It's crazy, man. Feels like Catwatch is now gonna... Now Catwatch is gonna be able to push out. Finally? There we go. Just crazy stuff. All right, so uh, we've got 13 pikemen, and we've got 14 crossbows in queue for Catwatch out of two ranges. So it's going to take him some time to get his numbers. He will, however, complete this castle, and he still has a timing with if he can bring forward trebuchets, maybe. Uh, for Hera, the eco should be bad enough for Catwatch, where you can go... I mean, you get the Hustar upgrade for free, right? So honestly, I, Catwatch continues to focus on crossbowmen, which is not what I would have focused on at all. I like always go halb opening versus, versus free Hussar. Um, oh man, painful for Catwatch as he's late to realizing there. But yeah, so Hera just go full Hussar and kill this. Like you gotta go instead of archer ranges, you have to go barracks here always. Uh, it's going Trebs to pressure Hera's castle, which is which is awesome. And, you know, for Catbotch, he, he did a lot right today, but Kara just has been able to impose his will on him. But certainly some frustrating ones, you know, if you're a Catbotch fan. Like, I, I, I mean, frust this game is frustrating for me <laughs> because Kara, I don't know. But Catbotch had such a good start. Like, this castle here, if he falls back with those initial vills and goes for Barrack Pikeman... And, and clicks Hal before any makes any crossbows. He takes all this map control ten like five minutes ago. His first castle's here, and he's already trebbing Hera. And then Hera would have been stuck in Castle Age, and then Hera can't make bomber cannons, and then Hera could die that. Like in the the position, it was such an invitation. Like Hera continuing to make light cap and showing his hand was an invitation to you know get dominated. <laughs> I mean, that's what it feels like from up here. I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I haven't been doing this long enough. Maybe give me a couple more years. Such a sad one for Catbutch. Hera, um, we have a pause here. This game is live. Hera did make petards somewhere. Oh, no. He queued them and then he canceled them. Never mind. And he's dropped a castle on his base, which is interesting. And a castle here. So lots of castles. Um... Will want to make Bombard Cannons, but didn't actually have the workshops ready yet. Which is an interesting detail. <laughs> I feel for Catwatch. I hate Monk play so much. Yeah, Hera's gotten a lot of value from his Monks in some of these scenarios today. Like, um, the healing, but also how many conversions did he get? 20 conversions. Like, that... I think Catwatch has is, is taken fights expecting to the Monks to be worse. Uh, expecting them to die and then he donates units and then the monks don't die and then the monks start healing and then it snowballs on him but yes we have a pause for whatever reason <coughs> he's getting chemistry now um but i'm i'm wondering if the timing is going to be there like Hera is getting conscription, so his army production will be faster. And his opponent's army is so weak. That is such a small army. And it really has to be the Halb upgrade, and it really has to be numbers. And we've got four barracks. Where are the barracks, actually? Oh, I guess I just couldn't see them. We've got one, two, three. Where's the fourth? Oh, it's behind the castle. Okay, got it. 
Now, I think Hera will go... Um, he'll repair his castles. He'll go for... He might not even need this. Honestly, he could just use the Hussars. But he can we'll add Bombard Cannons, and he'll just snipe the Trebs. And then after that, Hera has a lot of cool things to transition into. So he could go Cav Archers. He could go Janissary. I think Janissary is actually an underrated play here because it's a really good unit right when you make it without upgrades. And sometimes transitioning into the uh, Cav Archer play takes too much time. The... Um... The game with Viper and Barrels, I don't know if you guys watched that series, but there was a pretty crazy game with Turks versus uh, Bohemians there. And Viper didn't have... He wanted to use the wood for artillery, which is, I think, 500 wood, and then also the Bombard Cannons, which is 225 wood apiece, and the Treb. So he didn't really have the wood to go for six archer ranges. And then he also didn't really have the time to get, like, Fletching and Bodkin Arrow and Bracer and Armor and Thumb Ring. It's a big investment. So even though Turks have really good Cav Archers, if you've got the castles, I think mixing in Janissaries against Halb is actually really good. Cav Archers probably more ideal uh, if you're combining with Hussars because both Elite Janissary or just Janissary in general and Hussars both cost food. So it's actually really tough to create both at the same time, whereas Cav Archers are wood and gold. But yeah. Apparently one of the players has a bathroom break right now. That's what people in chat are telling me. The first person said Hera taking a duke. And then uh, someone else said it more kindly and said Hera's got nature's call. And then somebody else said Hera's on a bathroom break, so... T90, tell us an AOE2 related joke. <laughs> Is it too mean to say losing when you have a 30 eco lead? Ah! <laughs> I'm kidding. I still feel so bad for Capot for game two. Uh, I genuinely think that tilted him. Like, not tilted, like a lot of people think tilt and they think like steaming or or angry or pissed, right? But when I think tilted, the the main thing is just you're just frustrated with yourself, and yes. then you can't you can't make the proper decisions throughout the rest of your session. You know, AOE two related joke. Uh, scariest Civ in Age of Empires, guys. What's the scariest Civ in Age of Empires two? Yeah, you have clouded decision making because of something that has happened. That's that's. First and foremost, what I think when I think Tilted. Scariest Civ in Age of Empires 2 is the Scarisons. <laughs> uh, Goths was a nice bet. Someone else said Boomies, but definitely the Scarisons. <laughs> That's my AB2 joke. There you go. All right, so Hera Artillery. And he's got... As many Hussars as his opponent has helps. And he's he's also making a couple Jans here. And getting a lead Jan. Yeah, a really good decision. And I don't even think you benefit from the next castle. I think you save that for when you take this position or if you take this position or for the rest of the map. The only way Hera loses this game is if he overbooms, I think. If he maxes out with his army, which he... And he has a better economy. Turks have the more devastating army options, and they also have the um, the relics and and the better economy right now. So, Capoch needed more army. He needed to use imp. He needed to have map control. Uh, none of which he's really been able to accomplish here. And he's still playing catch up on upgrades. So you know, there's still. You know, this is a force that just can't really survive as Hera gets a nice grouping there. A Capwatch does try and save some of them by sending them into the castle and out the other side. But Hera just continues to loop around, sees the Trebs, says thank you very much. And I know Hera just went to the bathroom, but Capwatch has got to be crapping himself right now after seeing all these Hussars kill his army. A 3-0 uh, for Hera obviously is huge. But getting 3-0'd of your cap watch, it, it definitely puts you in worse position in the group, and we can talk more about that. But 
you know, I, I think many people had expected that the possibility of that result today. It is, however, a painful result for Catwatch because of Game 2 specifically. Game 2 deserved a victory, it felt like. And Hera just clutched one out with that crazy aggression. And yeah, again, you, you know you've got similar army numbers, but Hera's army is stronger here, so this is... This is pretty over, I think. You don't lose groups. Group points if you lose, right? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by group points. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, no, no, no. If you lose, you don't lose points. It's all about how many wins you get. Not about how many losses. Though I guess, like, losses... You know, if you're losing, you're not winning. <laughs> so... But yeah, so Kapach doesn't go down in the standings based on, you know, losing games. But everyone else in the group has opportunities for wins that he's not getting here in round three. But fortunately for him, I mean, he's still going to be on five wins after three rounds. And he still, in my opinion, is playing really, really well. On a different day with a couple different things tweaked, he could win this series 2-1. Or at the very least... You know, if you consider that to be an exaggeration, he he wins, he loses this series 2 1. Yeah. We got Bomber Tower now from Hera, who's like, I want to play this like MBL does now, because it looks really fun. But again, it's not a game that you lose in Hera's position. You have five relics, and your opponent's not pushing. This is Capwatch, I think, fighting for the sake of it and just hoping Hera will make massive mistakes. That should never happen here. Like, it's actually harder to lose it from Hera's position than it is for Capwatch to win from his position. <laughs> but yeah, I, the Bombard Towers are like, just, just make sure, right? Let's just make sure that he doesn't get to push me. How many stables does Hera have? A lot of stables, bro. 20 stables. That's a lot. The dream with Turks, right? Nice split there from Kapoch. But, you know, it's in a similar spot to what he was in earlier in um, the series in game one. It's like, what what do you actually push with here? And if you say bomber cannons, their bomber cannons are just going to outrange you. It is bomber cannon. That's what he's going to try and do. He is actually pop capped. He doesn't want to call it when he's fully popped. Hera's Hussars just trolling along the front. I think with the amount of stables Hera has, he can fully justify just fighting and making more. And that's precisely what he does. He's got more Hussars in the queue behind this. I'm sure you might lose those Hussars, but you clear out a lot of the halves because your Jans are doing so. And behind this, you're making tower on tower on tower. And you're like, yo, Catwatch, get out of my game, man. The cannon's perfectly protected here. And we'll take out this castle. Catwatch also can't take this gold now. And you cannot deal with these with artillery bombard towers, man. You can't stop these things if you're cap on. Now Harris spending the resources because he knows he can at this point. So, interestingly enough, guys, uh, cap watch, or sorry, not cap watch. Hera actually plays again after this. So, Hera came in uh, five and one. And he won't be playing at, like, your typical week four timing. So he's playing two rounds. He's going to do this series, which he obviously is about to conclude. And then he's going to go play Miguel. And Miguel is, like, really going to have his work cut out for him. Miguel has one win after two rounds. So Miguel, he got one win off of Jordan in this group. And then he got uh, three wins off of Capwatch. Or, sorry, no, no, no. He lost three games against Capwatch is what I meant to say. So Miguel is in the relegation fight. He's deep in the relegation fight. So he is under more pressure to get wins than Catwatch is against Hera. Just because of how the earlier rounds have gone. And with how Hera's playing, obviously. You know, it's tricky. Like, Hera's obviously playing super, super good Age of Empires. But I think he should have lost. Boom! But I think he should have lost. Um, game two. Like, game two? Miguel is going to favorite cross all day if that's how Hera's going to play it. It gives you amazing position in competitive Age of Empires if that's how Hera chooses to play that map. So I don't know, like Hera wins 3-0, but I 
you know, and I think uh, Catwatch has shown he's better than Miguel. That's what makes it tricky. Which makes you think Miguel's not even going to have much of a chance, but... Okay, what does Catwatch see right now? I, I feel like... I, I feel dirty watching this, man. I think he's frustrated at the moment. <laughs> like, Hera's just sniping arbs and having fun. Like, there's no way you pushed this back. Giving us some highlights, I guess. Uh, honestly, we're at build a wonder territory if you're Hera. You don't even need to spend resources on ar any more army. And Hera doesn't actually have any Hussar production, so... Maybe he's taking that a little bit too literally. But... You know, again, still, it, it's going to take a very long time for Catwatch to ever be able to push these towers back. And all Hera would realistically actually have to do is use the Bomber Cannon. That's all he needs to do is Micro Bomber Cannons. That's all Catwatch can make to push it back. And Catwatch won't know he has the population lead. This is what Catwatch sees on his face. <laughs> he has no gold. He has no relics. Like... Maybe if I keep playing, T90 won't put this game on YouTube. Yeah, maybe because the game looks dull. And he won't put it on YouTube. Th that's what I need to do. I need to always upload the games where they drag it out super long. And I've, I've kind of, unfortunately, run out of things to talk about. I know Catpatch is not factoring that into his equation at all. Like, he's not thinking about my YouTube content. He's like, holy crap, I'm so freaking annoyed with myself. I lost game number two. And so Hera's not killing me. Like, Hera's also, like, trolling the guy. Because he's not going for the kill. So Catpatch is like, if he's not going to finish me off, I'm not going to resign. And Hera's like, well, I'm going to kill him and he needs to resign. Hera's just having fun, you know? This is actually good for the schedule for the next series. Because the next series is supposed to start in seven minutes. So maybe that's what these guys are up to. Maybe JBR messaged them and said, hey, can you just drag this out a little bit longer? Oh, overchop. Hera's getting fortified wall when his wall is wide open. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> what wins? Two Bombard Towers or uh, 30 Halps? It's always the two Bombard Towers. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect for the schedule. Hera's like, Hussars are cheating, bro. Hussars are cheating. Architecture now. Maybe maybe Hera just clicked all the upgrades at this point. And okay, Catwatch calls the GG. Well, a painful series for Catwatch. Again, I think his goal was to get at least one win here today. I do think that despite the tilting result here for Catwatch, that he showed um, how good he actually is. Like game one, so many players would have died so much faster. Game two, he probably should have won. And probably would have won if he just made one other tweak to how he played that. And then game three, this one was just bad, honestly. Um, I think Hera, like, gifted him a win on a silver platter as long as he saw that Hera had some light cab upgrades and just backed away and opened Pikeman and never made the archer ranges. The archer range can come later, I think. But maybe that's just inexperience from Catpatch on Arena. Um... Hera goes up to uh, eight wins out of potential nine in Group C. So he is uh, leading in Group C currently, though we have a lot more games to come. And, and obviously, Hera is definitely going to be leading in Group C uh, because he's also going to be around ahead of schedule because uh, he will be playing Miguel next, actually. That'll be our next series, at least for those of us here live. Um, there's a look at some of the stats if you guys wanted to see some of this. Obviously, this game was a foregone conclusion for a really long time. And... Let's see. Capwatch now has to play in the future. He he's played Miguel, he's played Hera, he's played Jordan. So the other players in that group, can we look at that right now? Um other players in that group. Ah, Ganji and then Kingston. I mean, those are both the players that were promoted. So Capwatch has the quote unquote easiest schedule remaining for him, and he should be in a actually kind of fighting Jordan a little bit. Wait, did Catwatch play Jordan? I'm missing something here. 
Catpaw played Miguel. Catpaw played Kingston already. Okay, excuse me. Sorry. I forgot I casted that series. It's more embarrassing when I cast it, but I, I'm going to be covering everything. So, yeah, he has to play Jordan and Ganji. And so right now, it kind of feels like that we have to see what Jordan will do in his next sets. It does kind of have a feel of like Capoch and Jordan fighting for spot number two and three, potentially, though a lot could happen. 